Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you again. Cute for teams, champions using teams effectively. Ricardo Wilkins is here and somewhere out there is uh, Stacy as well. I think she may be joining in a few minutes or something like that. Um, and you're out there. So I'm glad to have you. <laughs> um, I will start by saying that today is the 75th episode of Cute for Teens, which I believe is a diamond anniversary or for us, I guess, a, a uh, diamond week anniversary. <laughs> so 75 episodes of Cute for Teens and you've been there the whole way. <laughs> Um, so as you as you can imagine, all of them are on the YouTube playlist. I am a little behind in getting the last few out there, but I plan to get that done today. But yeah, 75. And um, and in fact, since we're on that topic, um, I will also point out, let's see, that if you go to TeamworkCowboy.com, of course, you got the cute for teams uh, button there. Or aka.ms slash cute for teams. But what I wanted to show, you know, in case you didn't know, I, st I stopped trying to list the episodes here on the page since they're listed already in the YouTube playlist. But what I did instead is try to map them, the different episodes, to different topics. I thought that might be helpful. So, for instance, uh, if you were interested in, you know, files related stuff, there, you know, those are the episodes for that topic so i had a one saturday where i just geeked out and just tried to start you know putting them all together and probably already a little bit outdated because of the last three or so but this is what i'm trying to do now so that uh you know you, you can certainly search in the uh, youtube playlist for keywords and i guess that depends on how well i label the video but um this may also be helpful as well so according to this effort there's at least 42 different topics we've talked about over the last 75 episodes so hopefully this is, can be a nice repository for you but uh yeah we got our diamond and uh diamond week anniversary here the other thing i was going to mention too uh yesterday i believe was an event for um viva um so uh if you go to the viva slash event page you'll see a nice video it's got Sacha in it um, and, an, and in addition I would recommend taking a look at uh, I think it's this guy here this brochure yep latest innovation September 2022 lots of cool stuff in here we we have been talking about Viva um, you know here in these sessions every now and then and so just thought you might be interested in knowing there's a, some brand new collateral and whatnot for for Viva based on yesterday's event so just another little thing to make note of so lots of good stuff going on all right um other than that uh you guys are all here stacy i see stacy in the background is here as well and so uh we're here for uh your questions and or geek out with you um if anybody came with a burning question or or topic to discuss they don't always have to be questions this is you know like a champions group if you have a topic that you want your fellow you know teams geeks to you know uh talk about with you we're, we're up for that too but feel free to go in the chat or um or um come off mute and um so this is why i shouldn't have tried some of the little fancy stuff i'm doing over here i must have did something wrong <laughs> well what I, I again what i was i had i had this up during my little speech about the 75 week anniversary and then um, I did have this up uh, when I was talking about Viva. This page has that Viva info and this link here has the brochure I was mentioning with all of the uh, new innovations for Viva. So just a quick recap on the stuff that uh, you didn't see. <laughs> so I'm glad we're good now. Um, so with that said, so now that we're good on the technical front and as I'm checking chat, so we got took care of that issue. Um, and then I see Stacy brought up self chat in teams. Um, is that something everybody's been starting to use? Uh, and by that we mean, um, chatting with yourself, which this is my, is it in here in my, uh, GCC 10? Yeah, there we go. Nope. That's not it. 
switch. Uh, I think we all know, but let me share a different window here. Uh, I, I officially have too many windows going on. Chat. And there's a, basically a chat with myself here. That's what we're talking about there. And hopefully you can see that. Um, but any uh, anyone in love with that feature or using it? I see in the chat some people have used it a little. Uh, used to send chat to your personal email address. Yep, it's like your own personal journal. Um, like it's a hang a doc, so you can easily refine it. Yep. And uh, I, yeah, I use it as a also a place to try things out. Um, for instance. Uh, the feature for uh, sending a video note to someone before I did it officially with someone else, I tried it with myself. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that could be useful for sure. Um, and in the chat, I'm seeing a, ask uh, the question from Tim about shared channels. I think we did confirm. I think it was last week that that is uh, got a delay. Um, in 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 uh, GCC, it is there in commercial. Um, and I guess I should turn on my camera at least. Let's see here. Oops. So I'm guessing nobody's seeing that either. Come on. All right. Thumbs up if you can see my uh, camera now. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, someone is. Um, Still using Notepad, they're not they're not ready for journaling in Teams yet. So <laughs> Notepad is a little little bit new now in Windows 11, so that's that's all good. Um, and uh, Sean is saying end of the month for shared channels in GCC, so that's that's good news. Um, awesome. I uh, I actually had asked myself the question of uh with sh with with shared channels being out there when would i use a private channel instead because i can certainly do a shared channel that doesn't have anyone that only has certain people from the team that it's in in it plus the ability to add externals so um, i don't know if anybody has been playing with this maybe on their commercial tenants or anything uh, i'll have to think through that and maybe look at the you know docs on the difference but i'm wondering if the private with the private channel uh, brings to the table now we're, that we're in a shared channels world. I, I think I if anybody's um, got a thought Ricardo, there. Ricardo, this is Tim. We look uh, one of the things that say Tim, I think I hear you, but your little your uh, volume's low. All right, let me turn it up. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Yep. But one of the things I think uh, when sh when private channels first came out, people thought, oh, it's really great. They can bring people into the private channel that are not on the team, right? And so to me, that's what shared channels now can do for you. And that's where I would distinguish the two, right? So a private channel is a subset of the team. You can A shared channel can obviously be, you know, anybody. They don't have to be part of the rest of the team. So I think that's where I break it out. That's one of the use cases where you could, you know, distinguish it. And that's where my thought was is that I can make a shared channel, which is meant for people outside the team, but I can add people from the team to it. Correct. So, so why don't I just always make a shared channel so that I have the option in the future to add someone external, you know? Um, so both private and shared can add people, a subset of the current team into that channel. Why wouldn't I do shared channels all the time and give myself the option for the external? I'm sure there's some difference there or uh, overhead or something that I'm mi missing, but. Yeah, I guess until we get it and we play with it, that's a good yeah. point, but to, because the backend SharePoint's gonna be there, right? Everything in the right. backend should be the same, but. Yeah. Um, Stacy's been tinkering with it in GCC and looks like it's coming along. Um, oh, and then so Stacy is saying shared channels will support GCC cloud sharing, but not GCC to commercial, which is a important distinction there. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it'll definitely make private channels seem obsolete at this point, because when we try to steer people to private channels, the downfall is 
they have to be added to the team. And mm. that's a huge um, disadvantage of a private channel. And so I think that I, I think we're going to go away from it unless, like you said, Ricardo, there's something innately different about a shared channel that if that hasn't come out yet that we're going to find out. Right. Yeah. I'm hoping somewhere out there, I just haven't searched for it yet, is, is some kind of a uh, chart you know, or table, you know, with uh, differences between the two. Um, I viewed shared channels as a group chat with anyone and private channels as a subsection of your existing team. Yeah. And and then and as to your point in the chat, private channels could have tighter compliance controls. That that was my first thought is something related to compliance is probably different between the two. I can agree with that. And then the thing, bringing up that other option, just federated chat, because that is our other way of of talking with uh, folks outside the tenant is just good old fashioned chat. Assuming your organization allows that kind of federation on um, that that exists as well. The one other thing that I think might come up from, a, a again, a user who's not maybe quite as schooled as most of us are here, they might be say, oh, private channel, they will know that it's nobody outside the team. And we have a lot of teams that are like an office, right? And in the shared channel, they'd have to maybe go look at settings to see who's actually a member of the shared channel. But if it's a private channel, they're going to know right away it's only somebody on the team and so they might be more prone to use a, a private channel yeah you know, it's some other things that people might look at stacy's hard at work behind the scenes and she's found the table that i was hoping for um so um it's kind of looking nothing from that table jumps out at me as a clear like winner I mean, it speaks to what we talked about subset versus uh, people outside the team. And certainly this, the, the uh, share channels got some more uh, back end, you know, needs there. But yeah, I don't know, I'll have to read this a little more carefully a little later. So, interesting. I will say it does, it can take some getting used to, at least if you use it the way I do, in which I will share a channel with someone to allow them to put it in their team. Um, uh, and so then uh, when you get that invitation, then it's not just accepting that invitation. Now you've got some extra steps. It's OK. They, they've shared this channel with me and basically told me to put it somewhere. And so now I got to decide which team it goes to and then wait for the sharer to approve my placement. So just good stuff. But again, if, if somebody's brand new to share channels or has no concept of it, that can be a little, little daunting. So do you see a question in the chat about sharing a com? Do you have a comment on sharing using OneNote versus SharePoint within Teams? Sharing using OneNote versus SharePoint. So those are two of my favorite tools. Um, and I guess I'm, it would probably depend on the content being shared. Uh, OneNote certainly has come a long way in its flexibility of, sh of sharing. Um, and particularly if you're sharing the content uh, within Teams or, or within your, your org even. Um, if, you're starting, if you're talking about external sharing, I think SharePoint may win there. Um, in, in some cases, but um, I will say that I do like sharing OneNote in Teams just because, and I don't know if I got an example in here. Um, when you do, it does give what I think is a really nice, let me see if I can just get out of this, gives a nice, um, nice link that makes it easy for that person to either open OneNote in Teams or in the browser. Um, and I think I can do that quickly here. Um, and even while I'm doing this, uh, the other potential advantage, though, is that uh, SharePoint's just got a ton of options for changing permissions and doing shares externally and internally. So um, it may win in terms of flexibility. I'm going to copy a link to this page. 
come down here and control V. And so, and then paste this. Now, what I like about this, I don't know if you, if, if it's kind of clear here, but there's really three links to this OneNote page, this very specific page. And that, that's a big deal for longtime OneNote users being able to link to a specific page. But we got one, two, three ways to click here. And um, there's a little difference depending on if you're clicking this from the desktop version versus the browser. But essentially, some of these are going to go right to uh, OneNote in Teams, right to the, the page. If you are clicking it from the browser, it'll still go to OneNote, but it'll go to just the, main, the first page of it. It won't go to the exact page you were trying to reference. You got the web view here in case someone wants to instead go um, to the you know the browser but again to directly to that page and then i think this one is giving me my my choice to actually open up the OneNote desktop app so i love the way they did that with with as you notice i just pasted the hyperlink to that page and it pasted three three ways to get there depending on what i uh you know prefer um, so I really like the way that that works out. So with us, a lot of the ongoing meetings that I have with uh, my team, we'll have a, a thread about, let's say, Project ABC. And every time there's a meeting and meeting notes, that thread, you know, has a, a, a link like this for that particular meeting's notes. And so um, on any in any given part of that that thread, I can go to that exact page of that notes to see what's going on there. So that's super useful. On the flip side, though, with SharePoint, um, I've got you know a ton of sharing options uh, for something in SharePoint in terms of uh, deciding whether it's uh, it's going to someone internal or going externally. Um, for some orgs who open up the anyone link, anybody that hits the the, the URL could, could access that SharePoint. And the last thing I'll say about this, uh, many people just uh, don't realize if I if I open this in SharePoint. I mean, I can share out a link to a folder, right? This this digital assets web folder, um, you know, has its own sharing, such that I could give an external person access to this, and and this is the view they would get. Now it would be minus some stuff over here; they they wouldn't see anything else that they're not have access to, but I can give them access to all the documents in this folder, uh, and even the ability to upload new docs. Basically, a an ad hoc, you know, OneDrive folder or, or like a drop folder, and uh, you know they can they can do that as well. So, so a lot of flex <clears throat> flexibility on the SharePoint side, but but both are uh, both are pretty awesome. Um, you can use the SharePoint site subsite of the embedded OneNote. You can use the SharePoint site or subsite of the embedded. Of course, it's called Notebook. Oh, so I think uh, what you're referring to there is this guy here, which is the default note, OneNote notebook that is put into a project. And I, I rarely use this one because, and I, I think I did a video on this. Uh, there's some quirks to the fact that that default notebook is there. It behaves a little differently in some scenarios. So I tend to ignore that one <laughs> and uh, always make a new one. But you're right. There is a there is a one note notebook always there for the group being created by that team. So that's that that notebook there. Um, over the years, Office has added and deleted apps. Do you see OneNote as permanently being renewed with new versions of MS Office? So yeah, OneNote is I don't, I don't see that going away. It 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 got it's it's got it got its uh, sexy back probably about. I don't know, five or six years ago, uh, probably when when the OneNote for Windows 10 app came out. And um, if you if you keep up on OneNote news, you know that they are uh, actively trying to converge or it, the OneNote for Windows 10 and the old school or desktop version of OneNote so that they both um, look and behave uh, more alike. Because uh, today us, us OneNote fanatics either have to make a choice about which to use or just use both in our day to day. So um, if anything, I don't, I don't see OneNote going away. If anything, I see it um, getting functionality across the both apps and maybe one day converging into, into one that has everything. I, you know, I don't know, but I, I don't see it going away anytime soon. 
and uh, the yeah the OneNote app in the left rail and teams as they're saying in chat is is useful absolutely yeah in fact uh, if you are a big OneNote fan having um, access to all of the one notes that you uh, work with is is uh, very very useful. It's, you know, a lot of people make a you know a, a notebook for every project or every topic, which is uh, you know perfectly doable, and it's nice to be able to have those all listed there. So yeah, you guys know or may not know, but any any time you come with a SharePoint or OneNote question. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell me to stop <laughs> talking because I'll go all day about SharePoint and OneNote. Those are two of my uh, favorite topics. Good stuff. So yeah, to that question of which is better for sharing, I don't know if you had a specific type of content in mind to share or whether you're specifically thinking internal in your org versus external. Again, all of those questions I think would, for me, help me determine how I'm, I'm going to share it. I might even share a OneNote notebook that I've placed in a SharePoint folder and share out the SharePoint folder. So there, you, there's the best of both worlds, right? Um, so yeah, a couple ways oh, to do that. Yeah. Hi, Ricardo, this is Glenn. Uh, we're launching a bunch of new project teams in our organization. And so as they get started, they've been having a discussion, you know, do we want to use OneNote or SharePoint um, as our primary uh oh yeah and and i get that in terms of because one note with all of its pages and sections it's it's a i could see you thinking okay that's the tool for organizing all of our content with these pages and sections and then that's all nicely neatly in this one notebook i get that um and that I think that can work well, especially if the whole team is really committed to one note or is you know used to using one note um if you're not going to fully commit to like everything's going to go on one note, then then I think SharePoint then you know, has more flexibility because now I can do that same kind of organization with maybe folders or, or whatever. But I can also now put different types of artifacts in with different types of document management rules and, and things like that. So um, I, I think it depends, you know, um, I, I, I would I would probably lean towards both than than one or the other um just having the team understand the, the the values and benefits that they that they both share and both of them you know love teams right they play very nicely with teams so you don't necessarily have to choose one or the other uh, maybe find the the best of both especially when it comes to the, the team's integration okay thank you yeah good stuff Awesome. I, I think I was, did I miss anything in the uh, chat? I think uh, good there. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, at some point here soon, we'll be able to geek out on shared channels in a, in a GCC uh, demo tenant. Um, but certainly in, in the future, um, like next week, if it's still not there, but we want to start to see more. I mean, again, I'm, we're, I think even right now you're looking at my commercial tenant, so we can certainly, um, you know, start showing things. I mean, I've, I've already got shared channels in there today, so we can start going through some uh, scenarios if that's helpful and kind of get you ready for using it uh, in the uh, GCC. Again, a reminder that I don't, I'm, I'm almost positive that's not just going to pop up for you unless your org has done the back end changes needed to enable uh, shared channels. So even when the docs say that it's there, um, your org still got to make a decision about, you know, that B2B those B2B Azure AD changes as well. <laughs> Looking at the chat there. I probably should get that thing there, David. <laughs> Actually, Ricardo, that's made out of metal and it's online. You can buy it. It's an I it's a metal print. Really? So maybe nice. for Christmas we'll all chip in and get it for you. Uh, <laughs> Let me see if I could show that to the uh oh man. Yeah. Maybe not. I'm gonna try to use one note to actually paste the image here. And did it work? It sure did. One note's awesome. Cop I mean, I'm in a I'm in a VM. I've copied uh, copied an image on my PC to this VM. So that's what uh Dave was saying is probably on my wall here into my office. <laughs> 
I do have some SharePoint uh, memorabilia in here, but I don't have that one specifically. So, awesome. <laughs> I am a SharePoint lover, as is, uh, as you can tell by uh, this teamwork cowbell. But years before that, there was a SharePoint cowbell. So, if you didn't think I was a SharePoint geek as well, I have put that theory to bed. <laughs> so. Anybody that's also a SharePoint lover, there's I got content for you there as well. <laughs> In fact, that goes all the way back to 2008. Anyway, good stuff, good stuff. Any other burning questions or anything for our last couple minutes? Ricardo, I just wanted to let you know that um... The ticket that I entered is over at OIT, and they've reached out to me wanting to test it with me. <laughs> okay. So I've already I've already told them that you guys are kind of aware of it, but you guys yep. want the ticket. Um, so this person's trying to figure out how to enter a ticket because I don't think they've ever done it before. So. Okay. Yeah. The good news is, you know, like you mentioned it to me this morning, um, and then and I hadn't heard anything yet, but now I can tell it's out there. So yeah. Okay. Um, well, or it's being worked on at this point. Good deal. Cool. All right. We appreciate everybody coming out once again. And um, we will do it again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content. <laughs>